So now we want to know if, in fact, Washington can win or New York can win. Uh, Skip Bayless, well, it's for I, you. I, I can't say it's going to be a fact. Uh, if in I, fact. I wouldn't encourage you to take this to the I bank. I believe you. But this is for my friend Stephen A. Smith. I'm feeling blue today, Stephen A. I'm, I'm actually having a bad day, but I'm going to make your day a good day. I'm going to pick your New York Giants. Big blue to win tonight. I have told you from the start of the preseason, I like your Giants defense. I know it hasn't played that well, but it will only get better. I think it's still a little underrated. And I really liked what Big Blue did to Houston last Sunday because I love the big goose egg that Eli put, put up, which was no, no – Eli didn't throw one interception. And I loved it that 34 times he gave it to this guy named Rashad Jennings, who I've been raving about since your Giants picked him up. And he carried it for 176 yards. That is the formula to win a game against what at that point had been a, a hot Texans team, 20 to 6. On the other side, I'm sorry. After all this Cousins mania this week, I'm still not buying. I'm not sold. And I'm going to say it again. In the big shootout at Philly in the fourth quarter, Kirk Cousins had a QBR that's on a scale of 0 to 100 of 12. 12 in the fourth quarter when it was money time Kirk Cousins was not money and Stephen A I've brought this up before they gave Kirk Cousins three starts at the end of the year last year week 15 16 and 17 his combined QBR in those games again 0 to 100 was 31.4 he lost all three games and the finale against your Giants he went 19 of 49 no touchdowns and two picks that's not very good. I'm still not convinced he's the answer in D.C. So I, I'm going to go with your Giants tonight, 27 to 23, even though they have to travel on a short week to a wow. Thursday night in D.C. or in at, at yeah, Washington. Yeah, in D.C. Yeah. That's a bold prediction. 27 to 23 Giants. Uh, Bettis, what do you got? Well, I, I, I like everything that you said. I still don't believe, though, that the Giants – offensively are where they need to be right now. They, they're still developing. They're still learning this new offense. Yeah. And, and they're really leaning on the running game. And not, not a bad thing? It's not a bad thing to do. No. You know I, that better. I, I, believe, I believe in leaning on the running game. But when you go to Washington, Washington has been playing well against the run. You know, they ranked third in the NFL. It's a little deceiving, though. It is. Obviously, because of, you know, who they played. And they put a lot of emphasis in the stopping LaShawn McCoy. Okay, and they did. So I believe that will be a similar scenario when they play the Giants. Rashard Jennings has to be stopped. And with that being said, Eli, the pressure was taken off when the running game got going. And if you don't get the running game going, I think that's when you put Eli Manning back into the box that he's been in yep. the last couple of weeks. So. I don't believe that the Giants' offense is still good enough to win a game if they can't run the football. So I see the recipe is, is the Redskins loading up to stop the run. Their offense is good enough to score points on anybody. Sure. So I don't know if the Giants' offense, though, can produce the same amount of points. And I think it's just going to be a situation where the, the, both teams won't play great but I think the Redskins uh, score enough touchdowns to win this football game. Okay. I think 28-24 is going to be the score of this football game. All right. Yep, the home team. Uh, Stephen A., weigh in. I completely agree with Jerome Bettis. I'm going up against my Giants this evening, Skip Bayless. I simply don't I don't trust their offense right now. Defensively, they're better uh, than the numbers would show. They haven't played up to par. They, they got the 23rd or 24th ranked defense in the NFL. Um, I'm not overly impressed with them at this particular moment in time, but I know the defense can play better. Offensively, I just think it's too challenging right now. McAdoo being in there as your new offensive coordinator, trying to incorporate and implement the new West Coast offense. There's been an adjustment period. The fact that you ran the football effectively against the Houston Texans doesn't mean that your offense is clicking. It means that you found a way to run the football, and as a result, you won the game. But in order to beat the Redskins, in my estimation, you're going to have to throw it. That means Eli Manning is going to have to be on his game, which he usually is when he's going up in the nation's capital against the Redskins. You've got uh, a guy like Victor Cruz who finally scored the touchdown again. Uh, Ruben Randall and these boys, we know they can play, but at the same time, 
time, I just look at the Redskins and the, and, the, and the opportunity that they have to put up points in bunches. Alfred Morris is averaging over four yards a carry. Halu Jr. is averaging over five yards a carry. You've got Garcon. You've got Deshaun Jackson. And by the way, they're not even the leading receivers for the Redskins. It's this dude, Niles Paul, filling in for Jordan Reed, the injured Jordan Reed. So I take all of those things into consideration, although I recognize that Kirk Cousins doesn't have a great record as a starting quarterback. The reality is, is that it's not like his numbers have been putrid. He came in and subbed for RG3 once he went down against Jacksonville in the first, in the first quarter, accumulated over 400 yards of offense for the Redskins. Last week against the Philadelphia Eagles, accumulated over 500 yards for the offense. I just look at those things. And I say the New York Giants going up against these boys, I think the Redskins are going to put up points. I think the Giants are going to do some things as well. But I think that the Redskins ultimately pull out the victory 31-23. 